Welcome to Horror Rewind. This is Kelly Florence. And I'm Meg Hoftal. And today we're talking about the fourth episode of The Twilight Zone, A Traveler, or A Traveler, depending on how you say it. This will be a spoiler-filled episode, so just to warn you, we're going to talk about plot points and get into our thoughts about the episode. So first of all, this was written by Glenn Morgan of X-Files fame and directed by Anna Lily Amir Poor, who directed the horror movie A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, which is an Iranian vampire western. So if you haven't seen it, you need to see it. You recently just watched it and you were saying it was amazing and it, it really like usurps our sort of ideas of the particular like revenge trope and those kind of things, right? It's kind of like that. Exactly. And it's almost like you were listening to me, Meg. <laughs> Just kidding. No, it's it's also going to be featured in our upcoming book, The Science of Women in Horror, because it is exactly what you said. It it takes our expectations. I mean, the title, A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night. Oh, she's not safe, actually. She's the predator. Oh, shit. So it's, yeah, it's, it's a good movie. And she directed this episode. I was so happy to see that. Uh, she was involved in, you know, so recently I've I've learned about her. So what were your initial thoughts about this episode? Well, right away I was excited because it starts out with this woman, um, this, I guess she's a deputy, and um, we find out that she's indigenous, and, and this is, takes place in Alaska, um, which I think is really cool. Um, and we don't, we don't always get to see horror happening um, up in Alaska, so that was kind of neat. And um, so I like that, you know, we were seeing things through her perspective and we kind of got some, an idea of very right away, kind of like in the third episode, I thought they set up like who her character is and I sort of automatically felt like an empathy and an interest, um, maybe more, more so than even like the first two episodes. Yeah, I, I think so too. And it was, like you said, an interesting setting. And I was watching this episode with Campbell and immediately he's like, oh, th there's going to be something about Russia in here because they're so close to Russia because he knew exactly where they were, depending on our geogra geographically. And I'm like, well, we'll see. And it was. <laughs> he was right. I think he's good at predicting these things. I feel like this isn't the first time he's made a good prediction. Um, and then again, like to reference back to the third episode, they set up Greg Kinnear. They already like set up that, you know, maybe they don't like him too much. Um, but they do a really good job of just putting this little, like, insidious sort of racism in what he's saying. It's it's not it's not the sort of thing that's, like, so outright and, like, he's not saying it in anybody's face. It's kind of like the way racism, I'm assuming, usually works where it's said sort of offhand and, like, a joke or something like that. And so they set up his character nicely where you're like, oh, I wouldn't mind seeing him die. It's, yeah, these microaggressions of him saying, like, oh, we came in and tamed this land. And it's like, actually, people have been here long before you came, and it was, they were fine. So it's just this microaggression of, of racism. And, yeah, it was it was set up well. And then our favorite, Stephen Yun. We loved The Walking Dead, and we loved Glenn. And I'm so happy to see him in this show. I, I hope that my worst problem someday is I am, like, in a dark room with a flashlight, and Stephen Yun surprises me in there. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, she goes in and he's sitting there in that suit and it's all very strange because he's not supposed to be there and it sets up, it's very classic Twilight Zone. I mean, the, the setup, maybe not necessarily the first part with that the character development. Um, Twilight Zone maybe didn't always have the best character development in their little short episodes. Um, sometimes they did, sometimes they didn't. But the the setup of him being in that cell in that suit it very much felt like a classic episode the other thing that i liked is we were being given these little hints i mean he could just be somebody who found the keys and snuck in and is in is in this extreme traveler or what was it extreme tourist um it almost seemed like he could be a time traveler from the 40s or maybe he's from the future, like because of his phone technology. Or he could be an alien. Like they left a lot of these possibilities open until the last act, and and so we were kind of curious. We we didn't know if we could believe our own eyes or anybody's tale. Yeah, and I mean the fact they set up that this town is right outside this Air Force base, and then like um, Campbell mentioned, Russia kind of got pulled into it. So then you feel like okay. 
it, uh, yeah, Time Traveler was a good guess. And then, you know, there's all this stuff with maybe uh, technology and information. And so they're kind of throwing some different ideas at you. Um, but I think at one point it kind of turns. And then I think Alien probably was the only clear answer. It was it was well done. I liked uh, the little peripheral characters of the people in the town coming together on Christmas Eve, and and really it's all about this sheriff. You know, he's he wants to pardon people for his own making himself feel good. And um, I was thinking, you know, about the greater message and and what what is this telling us? And and then later I saw a headline. Um, talking about how well and I guess Jordan Peele t says it at the end too as the narrator but about how we believe things when we shouldn't and you know about fake news and um, and what are we willing to believe in order to further advance ourselves what we want and it's so deep well that's interesting because like you know he points out that She's suspicious of him the whole time, but once he gives her something that will help her, then all of a sudden her suspicion kind of, you know, falls by the wayside. And that's a really good point. And I think it's like we all sort of pick and choose what media and what um, memes even um, speak to us and kind of like put us on a pedestal and help us and instead of like standing back and um, – and say, you know, with, with a clear head. And so, yeah, I think, I think they did that well. And I think it was subtle. It wasn't with a heavy hand. Yeah. And I, there's some, in, in a, in a section in my communication courses, we, we talk about how we tend to expose ourselves to media, uh, newspaper articles, like you said, memes, pages, people that we follow on Twitter or, or wherever we tend to expose ourselves to those things that we already agree with and then the things that we don't agree with we'll more often dismiss um, and so like you said she flipped because it's like okay I've got this proof now or at least what she thought was proof um, so that she could advance herself oh and her brother he just wanted pie Meg do you <laughs> love pumpkin pie I do I don't think you do though no but I do love pumpkin pie and I I definitely um, empathized and felt one with Jack who just wanted pie the whole time like and he was drunk and he just wanted pie and I mean who hasn't been there there you go uh, I like the little they had the little gold alien dude that they put their hats or gloves near in the beginning it was a nice little uh, subtle reference and you know Glenn Morgan we we love Glenn Morgan episodes I always love Glenn Morgan he does a great job um I think if I only had one complaint about this episode, it would be that I it was so classic that I wouldn't have minded like a little extra twist at the end. I don't know. How did you feel? Yeah, it was almost it was almost too straightforward. It's like maybe the Russians should come in and then the aliens come or something. Yeah, I felt like I wouldn't have minded like just a little extra, one more little turn um, because it's like at one point you're like, okay, he's definitely an alien. And I like the whole idea of they come in and they like think they see antenna on him and then he's like, no, what are you talking about? And I loved all that. Um, but at the end, I could I could have used, sometimes you need Twilight Zone to just like mind fuck you and it wasn't a mind fuck episode, which is okay, but that that's probably be my one complaint. Speaking of of that I'm always surprised to hear them swear because like classic Twilight Zone like they definitely didn't swear and also when it was set and everything but every time they swear I'm like oh yeah that's right this is on CBS All Access and that's okay it's allowed which you know and in these situations I think it's probably more realistic that people are swearing <laughs> true yeah well when you watch um, a show where they can't swear and they're like holy crap it's like oh come on you wouldn't say that that's why I love I, I, it's usually for the sake of comedy but I love when they bleep things on network tv because that's funny yeah the the well-timed bleep is is perfect <laughs> so anything else you want to say about a traveler no I'm just I just want Stephen Yun to be in everything He's so wonderful. And it was fun to see him kind of be like this mysterious, creepy guy. It's like Glenn is like so sweet and so good. And um, so it's it was kind of cool to see him be something different. I'm excited to see this movie, which I was in at my local independent movie theater, but I didn't miss it. I mean, I didn't catch it. 
uh, called The Burning. Did you happen to catch him in that? I I keep hearing people say it was their favorite movie of last year, so we need to see that. I guess so. What is it, horror, or what is it? I don't think so, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because he's in it, and I want to <laughs> see it. So what is our scale going to be to rank this episode of The Twilight Zone? Pieces of pumpkin pie? Yeah. Okay. So out of a scale of 0 to 10, 0 being you hated it, 10 being you think it's a perfect episode, how many pieces of pumpkin pie do you give a traveler? I'm going to give it an 8 because perfect casting, a wonderful character development for a 50-minute episode. Um, it had some really nice, subtle, um, I guess, uh, what's the word? Lessons, so to speak, um, which I think Twilight Zone always sort of attempts to do in its sci-fi way, and um, I really like that, and it wasn't heavy-handed. Um, but yeah, it would have been nice just to have that little extra twist. So that's I'm gonna give it an eight. That's also what I'm giving it an eight. And um, yeah, like you said, there's usually a moral to the story in Twilight Zone. And yeah, there's there's been a moral in every every episode so far. And and people who are like they need to not be political. I I saw somebody uh, tweet like they shouldn't be so political in Twilight Zone. And 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 somebody responded like, have you watched the original? Every episode has something to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and in this climate not being political it would seem even more like insincere and weird i don't know yeah exactly oh and i loved the direction by anna lily amampur and i cannot wait to see uh who is involved in further episodes because i i feel like jordan peele is absolutely giving um a lot of people a seat at the table which is awesome next week's episode is john cho jacob tremblay and allison loman toman toman yes allison tolman love her John Cho, love him. Jacob Tremblay, I mean, I don't know, but I'm assuming he's a really good actor. <laughs> he, remember, he was in that movie that I loved and you didn't, I, with um, oh. what's her name? That that scary movie. Like the act, she's I... she was a poor actress, but I love that movie. Before I wake. You loved it. It was so scary. I don't know what. I know you didn't like it. It was alright. It was okay. But anyway, but he was in that, so you do know that he's great. Yeah. Okay. He is a good <laughs> actor. <laughs> Well, I know he's in Room and stuff, like I, which I can't bring myself no, to watch. That looks too intense. Um, but you know, good for him. He was on a funny episode of um, Billy on the Street. Yes. <laughs> and, oh God, that's so good. <sighs> what you know? What else? What else do I need? Oh, and then Campbell also reminded me his favorite. Um, segment of Conan featured Stephen Yun. They go to North Korea, but before that, they go to the Korean spa. <laughs> oh, that's great! Yes, I love that episode of Conan. That's really good. Yeah, they're they're like messing around on like the demilitarization. Demilitarized zone. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um. Yeah. And then they they go to the spa where you have to like be naked, and then like people like basically make you bleed. Yeah, I mean, they scrub you so hard. And you know what? I went to a Korean spa and I was, I noped out. I was like, you know what? Because they give you pajamas to put on to go like lay in hot coals for a while. I mean, not literal hot coals, like hot stones. And I just skipped to that point instead of doing the naked stuff. Because I, I was, it was just, you're just in a room with like, you know, 50 other naked people and they scrub you. And I just, I couldn't do it. I'm sorry. No, I wouldn't be able to either. We're Minnesotan. We have we have like we just can't go be naked in a room with other naked people. I mean, I'm I'm like I don't know. I've always been modest, but I just I, yeah, I just couldn't I couldn't do it. So I went and took a nap in like hot stones, and it and that was nice. Well, that sounds good. Maybe we should go to like a spa that doesn't require you to be naked. We should do that. Yeah, that sounds relaxing. Okay. Will Steven Yun be there? <laughs> God. <laughs> Would you go in the naked one if Steven Yeun was going to be in there? I mean, probably not. I mean, this sounds like the setup to like where I should say yes, but I probably wouldn't. No. Would you? No, that would probably be worse, but I mean, I'd think about it. <laughs> if he's the one scrubbing you? Yes, I'll be there. <laughs> this took a dark turn, yeah. fans, and we have no moral. <laughs> we have no morals, so yeah. we're not teaching you anything. Yeah. But listen, tune into Horror Rewind. Uh, next week we're going to talk about the next Twilight Zone episode and turn into tune into the Twilight Zone support this diverse amazing reboot which is so close to the classic yet uh, l- uh, l- enough modernized where you know I I just think it's I think it's so good 
I think it's good too. Just get CBS All Access, like get it on your Amazon Prime, and then you can watch it. It's easy. Until next time, we'll see you in the horror section.